I think. Therefore, I am. I think. Therefore, I tweet. I hunger. Therefore, I eat. I shiver. Therefore, I turn up the heat. I tire. Therefore, I sleep. Philosophy sweatshirt. Philosophy is not just the preserve of brilliant but eccentric thinkers that it is popularly supposed to be. It is what everyone does when they're not busy dealing with their everyday business and get a chance simply to wonder what life and the universe are all about. Now, I might have been a little harsh about the modern philosophy at the beginning, but we could all stand to put away our phones and do a little bit of the wandering this passage talks about. That passage came from the philosophy book, Big Ideas Simply Explained. Now, from what I understand, there are a bunch of these different types of books uh, about different subject matter. There's obviously the philosophy book, there's the literature book, the science book, and I think there's even one that's specifically about Shakespeare. And these books do a really good job of explaining the general overview of the subject matter they're presenting and doing it in a way that you can follow along the path that each of these studies have taken over time. This video is just going to be a very, very brief, and I mean it this time, intro into what philosophy is all about. And I mean it this time. And I'm doing it because the book that I'll be reviewing next week is a more modern piece, but it is a piece of philosophy. And I really just want to put it on the table that I feel very differently about philosophy as literature. I see it as more of an instructional guide for the mind. Uh, sometimes you get what you're doing before you get to the end. Merely because philosophy goes back to ancient Greece, and a lot of what they covered is very basic by today's standards. Now, of course, if later you find a leaky pipe, it's probably best to go back and read what you missed the first time. But if we're being honest, one of the most famous philosophers, Socrates in ancient Greece, didn't even write down his ideas, and he really didn't even find a lot of answers to the questions that he was posing in the first place. That philosophical basis that really started with Socrates centered around debate and discussion. Now his ideas really did get written down eventually with his apprentice Plato, and Plato's writings were based around his discussion with Socrates, and it helped to preserve those ideas that Socrates started from the beginning. Plato then took an apprentice Aristotle, and all of the discussion that they fostered started the foundation of Western philosophy. And like I said, the focus was on discussion and debate, which of course encouraged disagreements. Just in a quick read at the beginning of the philosophy book, the introduction really highlights that those three gentlemen really didn't agree with each other all the time, but they appreciated the discussion so that they could really start to get to the bottom of what the answers could possibly be to the questions that they were posing to society and each other. And so the first philosopher is an ancient Greek, ancient Greek, ancient Greek started about... 2,500 years ago, and they looked for explanations for natural phenomena that weren't necessarily tied to the myths or the legends that they had known their whole lives. Some of the early questions that they asked were, what is the universe made of? And soon after those questions started to get science and research and more discovery, those questions started to come to what is the nature of whatever it is that exists? This branch of philosophy is now called metaphysics. Much of this branch of philosophy deals with the human condition and forms the basis for much of Western philosophy, which brings us to a first major branch, especially for the beginning of philosophy, both Western philosophy and Eastern philosophy. China was the other end of the spectrum for the beginnings of philosophy, and they were the ones that really started to put down the foundation for Eastern philosophy. The Chinese felt that the metaphysical questions were already answered with the Chinese felt that the medical the Chinese felt that the medical <laughs> 
The Chinese felt that the metaphysical questions were already answered with religion, so they focused more on moral philosophy and physical philosophy. Now just to really, really simplify the process from there, the philosophers in both the Eastern branch and the Western branch all started to pose new questions and come up with new answers using the process that they started to dub logic, which was based off of reasoning that relies on establishing the truth of statements, which can then be used to build up a train of thought leading to a conclusion. It really turned into a math equation that used language instead of numbers. Now, of course, a lot of math is absolute, a lot of language is not, and a lot of the reasoning that came after that became more and more abstract and more and more branches of philosophy came from that. What you're left with is an entire history of philosophy that can take your whole life to get through. Luckily, there's books like this that takes these ideas and turns them into chewable bites so you don't have to go feast after all of this knowledge and these huge tomes of philosophy. Did that comparison even make sense? Again, I'm simplifying philosophy a lot here, and I'm no expert myself. I got my philosophy. But I'm really making this video today for any of you that are trying to get into philosophy and recommending this book right here. I haven't gone through the whole thing, and it's not counting for the 2017 reading goal, but I like to use it for a baseline of understanding for a lot of these philosophical ideas that I wasn't familiar with previously. This breaks down a lot of the main philosophical ideas chronologically, and also has a choose-your-own-adventure vibe where if you want to go through that same branch of philosophy, it'll give you the next page where that branch is continued. Me personally, I kind of jump all around the spectrum. The book I'm discussing next week is fairly modern as far as philosophy goes. Cosmopolitanism was published in 2007, I believe, and focuses around the globalization of the modern age and what moral obligations we have to our fellow humans. Different authors of philosophy have very different styles from very analytical to a very flowery prose. And from what little I've read so far of cosmopolitanism, it falls somewhere in the middle. If you're just getting into philosophy, definitely find the style that's right for you. Some people enjoy the analytical side of philosophy, and some people do like to be entertained. I know a lot of people have been turned off by philosophy just because they haven't been able to find that happy medium for them. I can't wait to discuss this next week. I hope that this video is as brief as I promised at the beginning. And I mean it this time. But all the same, thanks for joining me here today. My question to you before I sign off is, if you're a philosophy-minded person, how do you go about your philosophical studies? Do you do it in a chronological order? Do you follow the branches of philosophy? What works for you? Leave it in the comments below and hopefully we'll get a discussion going. We're all the way at episode 6 of Brian's book, Bastion, and we're not stopping here. See you all next week for episode 7. Woo!